Let's start our journey in a little story I like to call the terror of the void. In the early 1950s, a small group of volunteers at McGill University signed up for what sounded like easy money. All you had to do was sit in a quiet room, wear translucent goggles that turned the world milky white, pull soft gloves over your hands so touch felt distant, rest your head in a U-shaped pillow that muffled sound, and all you had to do is just stay put. The setup was actually called perceptual isolation. It was a polite phrase for stripping the senses down to a trickle. Within hours, many volunteers were restless. Within a day, their thoughts grew sticky. More than a few reported images that arrived uninvited. Patterns drifting across the blank field of vision. And the visions? Animals that weren't there. Scenes that faded in and out. The classic paper from the line of research has a careful title. Effects of decreased variation in the sensory environment. But the lived experience was anything but dry. When variations vanished, the mind supplied it. This wasn't a haunted house. It was a lab built on a blunt question. What happens to attention and thinking when the world stops changing? The results suggested that our minds do not idle well because we're prediction machines. When external input goes flat, the brain's internal model keeps talking and starts to dominate. What's striking is not that people hallucinated, but how quickly they did so when the outside world offered almost nothing to correct the brain's guesses. Fascinating. 